Good morning. You know, in the in the strange that we've got to the place in the church that uh, you can't begin until the guys upstairs get there, right? You know. <laughs> It's so good to be in the Lord's house this morning. How many of you remember to thank God for this beautiful Lord's day? Amen. Hadn't it been beautiful? God's been so good to us. You know, I, I want to share with you something else that, that we need to be thankful for as a church. Uh, it was almost a year ago that I, I come to this church. And you know what everybody was worried about? When they do this road out here, how are we going to get to church? Because originally, if you remember, you weren't supposed to be able to come this way and, and across. And, you know, we've tried to come up with all kinds of different ideas and thoughts. How are we going to get around that? Isn't it wonderful that God just takes care of things for us? I don't know about you, but, but I was very thankful when I come down the road first time and saw, hey, we can just cut right across. And our church isn't shut off. We see... God's take care of his people, whether we, you know, whether we understand it or not, he knows what he's doing. So we need to be extremely, extremely thankful for that. Let's bow our heads together for just a moment. Our Father and our God, we thank you for this day. Every day is a gift from God, and every day is a, a day to serve you. It seems like some days you just make them extra special, and, and we have a privilege to just enjoy what you've created and maintain all these times. Yes. So, Father, we just ask you this morning as we've gathered together in this place, we've come to give you praise. We've come to worship you. We've come to allow you to speak to our hearts, to change us, to mold us, to make us after your will. And I pray that each one of us, as we leave here, may be a little more like Jesus than we were when we come. So, Father, we pray that you would bless Brother Merriman. Lord, that you will fill him with your spirit, with your power. May he preach the unsearchable riches of truth this morning in a way that will change our hearts, mold us, and move us where you want us to go. And we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. You know, we look around the world today, especially, and we see all kinds of problems, right? You know, we see people that's desperate. We see people that seem to not have any direction in life whatsoever. And people that are slaves to alcohol and to drugs and different addictions and different problems. It seems like crime is out of sorts. It seems like, you know, everything seems to be upside down. But you know, through it all, there is a joy to be found. And there's a message to tell. And there's a hope to give. And that's the words and the truth. Jesus saves. Amen. Jesus saves. Jesus saves whether we deserve it or not because we don't deserve it. He saves us anyway. And, and he's the answer to every problem yes. that every person that you come in contact with. Amen. Jesus saves. So let's stand together and let us sing with joy in our heart and thanksgiving because of that true fact, Jesus saves.
And God's people said, Amen. Amen. What a great, great tree. You may be seated. I personally want to welcome the Merrimans here this morning. Had a privilege to meet with Brother Rick, and it's our first time to meet. And we want you to know, I feel comfortable with you here this morning. I look forward to what God's going to give to you, to give to us, to fill your heart, and to bless us. And it's a special privilege for me. I don't get to hear too many sermons, right? <laughs> I need that. And so, Brother Rick, we want you to know how welcome you are this morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Doug Dodd, and I'm just uh, doing the announcements this morning. Um, and uh, we'll go over the announcements here. Um, we will have a little scripture reading, um, have a little prayer time uh, as we move on through the service. Um, but uh, it's awful great to see everybody here. Uh, it's awful great to have uh, the Maribyrn family back with us again. Uh, Ricky's going to bring a message here. Uh, that I know is going to be a blessing to us all, and uh, his daughter Lauren is going to bring our special music today, and uh, that's going to be another blessing for us. Um, just a, wor a word about that. We uh, sometimes have technical difficulties, as the pastor alluded to, and uh, so today, um, uh, Kaya, our, our, our wonderful uh, daughter Kaya here, uh, all of us, uh, she's going to serve as microphone stand for Lauren as Lauren sings. So, uh, you know, sometimes God calls you to use your talents, uh, you know, singing, playing, being a microphone stand, whatever God wants, uh, you know, and uh, uh, bless her heart, she was, she was a trooper to, to go along with that. So, um, but uh, we do have some announcements. If you look in the bulletin, uh, some things that are uh, going on, as you saw when you came in, uh, you know, we've sort of redecked things out, uh, and uh, I think it's great. I think the decorations look beautiful out there for uh, VBS, for Vacation Bible School, that is uh, happening uh, tomorrow, Tuesday, and Wednesday from 6 to 8. So you may want to be a little early, excuse me, uh, tomorrow for registration and that kind of thing, but um, I know it's going to be a wonderful time. Um, kids, uh, again, we've talked about this before, but it's basically kids from preschool through uh, they just finished sixth grade. Rising seventh graders uh, are, are welcome. I mean, anybody's welcome. If you come and you're older than that, we'll put you to work. Uh, how about that? Uh, um, other things that are in the announcements that we want to make uh, sure that you're aware of. Um, we are going to be recognizing our graduates, as it says, here on July 2nd. So if you're a recent graduate or if you, um, you know, know of one that maybe we've missed, make sure that uh, you know, we know about those uh, guys so we can actually um, you know, recognize them. That's a major achievement, and we as a church want to celebrate that uh, with them and for them. Uh, but also we have our homecoming and revival coming up two weeks from today. And uh, so Reverend Donaldson Jones is going to be back with us. And... Um, uh, he kind of brings revival with himself, uh, even though uh, the revival in this church is not going to happen through him. Uh, it's going to happen in your heart through Jesus. And so um, that's where the revival comes from. But um, uh, he will revive you. Uh, for those of us who happen to be a little tired, and if you're going to nod off, you're not going to nod off in Reverend Jones' uh, service. He, uh, he will keep things uh, interesting and uh, full of the Spirit and a great guy. And it's wonderful to have him back with us. Uh, for that time, and so that's coming up in a couple of weeks. Uh, some other things related to homecoming, though, uh, Teresa. I just uh, have a few reminders for people for homecoming. We will have a covered dish meal after worship service on Sunday morning, and we're asking everyone to bring enough food for your family and your are expecting guests that day, so you do that. On Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, we will have um, a light dinner here at church. Um, it starts at 5, from 5 to 6. If you're a little bit later, you can still eat, but that's, that's kind of our time frame. Um, the church will provide those meals, so we really need a head count of how many will be coming. And I have a sign-up sheet out at the Welcome Center, and if you will um, list your family and how many are coming with you. If you've invited people to come to dinner with you, please include those guests. So... Um, and then I just want to say a little bit about the music on um, Sunday. Ricky Skaggs, who was here earlier in the year, will be here to sing on Sunday. Morning, Pastor. Morning, right? and, morning, and evening. morning and evening. 
And then on Monday night, um, Zion's song from Orange will be here. On Tuesday night, Roy and his group will be here. And then on Wednesday night, the Shiloh Men's Choir from Stanley School will be here. Awesome. So awesome. forward to having awesome. great revival. Awesome. Uh, I, I, I wish I could say, yes, it was Ricky Skaggs. It's actually Jerry Skaggs. Who's gonna be, I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, it's okay. Uh, Jerry's awesome, too. Uh, he really is. We, we, Pastor says we'd just as soon have Jerry than, than Ricky. Uh, it's okay. I just, no worries. No worries. No worries. Uh, it's all good. Um, uh, other announcements? Kendra. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Briefly after church, um, VBS, uh, and I know a lot of you are full of hot air, so yay, stick around, <laughs> fill some balloons, uh, they could use your help. Um, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, uh-huh, <laughs> yeah. there we go. Exactly. Um, the other thing uh, in the, oh, sorry, right, oh. Anna, no, go ahead, go ahead. What time is that? Saturday at 10 a.m. 10, 10. So Saturday at 10, uh, the Ladies Book Club. No, 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 it's good. It, they're really nice flyers, too. I don't know who put those together, but they look really nice, and they're, on the, uh, uh, they're just on the desk out there in the uh, vestibule. So. Um, oh, sorry, Bill.
on how to properly disarm and then rearm the security system. Please get with me, or Wayne knows more about it than anybody, but get with me or one of the deacons and we'll help you try to guide you through it. So that's all right. Thank cool, you. Cool, cool. Um, uh, so otherwise, um, Mission and Ministry Council, uh, we uh, uh, like to put a um, uh, highlight one of the missions in, uh, that we're supporting as a church. And um, uh, as it says in your bulletin for June, it's Hope for Appalachia. Um, most of us know about that. Um, but other missions that we have that we support, uh, one of which happens to be the Merriman Family uh, Ministries and uh, of course, Ricky's going to tell you more about the, the things that they do here. But um, they're doing great work. We uh, found out more about his mission last year when he was substituting uh, with us. And, uh, and it became, we, we loved what he was doing. It's a prison ministry, which we as a church didn't have uh, to support. And so, uh, so we adopted uh, their ministry and then began uh, supporting them as a church as well. Um, we have other missions that we support, um, not only locally and regionally, but also around the world. And one of those is in the Philippines. We have actually, uh, there's four, well, it's actually three families, but one of those families has two uh, members that we support. But one of the uh, missionaries we support in the Philippines is Melvin um, Ganao, is his last name. And I heard from Kyle, um, Melvin uh, gets around his area of the Philippines in a kind of an old, not so great car. And uh, it's his only mode of transportation, and he has a lot of, you know, uh, work to do. Anyway, he had a car accident, and uh, he's fine, but the car got demolished. And uh, basically, he was sitting in line, a truck came and didn't hit his brakes quick enough and hit him and smashed him into the, another car. Anyway, um, so it was asking if we might uh, be willing to, you know, help them out. Um, I don't think it's something that we're going to do a love offering for, um, but if any individuals in the church would like to help out with that, uh, please see me, and um, it's pretty simple. It's IBMA, International um, Baptist Missions for Asians, I believe is what that is, and, um, and we'll just send some, some money. You have to send it to them directly and there's a little um, you want to put a little note on the check so if anybody's interested in helping out with that again on an individual basis uh, please see me and I can give you some more information about that okay um, other announcements okay um, let's actually go to the word and uh, and read some scriptures um, today's scripture passage is in Matthew Chapter 16. And we're going to be uh, in the middle of that chapter, starting with verse 13. Matthew 16, starting with 13, we're going to go through 18. Okay, so when Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you? He asked, Jesus asked. Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by man, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you, that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. May God uh, bless the reading of his word. Uh, one of the first proclamations uh, by a human uh, that uh, Jesus was the Son of God and the Christ. Uh, of course, Peter, you know, it was revealed to him because a few verses later, you know, he kind of messes it all up and he, he doesn't really get it. But, uh, but this was a revelation uh, to a human being um, about Jesus and uh, helps us to realize that that same revelation can happen with us, too. Uh, hopefully we've all had that and know where we are at this point. Um, so we're going to have a, our prayer time now. Uh, if anybody, we have in our bulletins um, the, uh, the prayer list, which is, um, you know, kind of long. We're not going to repeat any of those, but if there's anything that's not on that list, Owen.
this Thursday. Yeah, that's a tough thing, tough thing. Others, other prayer concerns. I know um, Kyle, uh, we, uh, Teresa sent it out in the one call, um, Kyle went home uh, from the hospital after his um, uh, motorcycle accident, and um, he is, uh, he's home now, I spoke with him yesterday. Um, you know, Kyle is, uh, he's full of energy and full of life, and uh, you know, happy guy. Uh, he has often said, though, uh, you know, people will tell him his middle name is Go, because uh, he's always on the go doing something. And, uh, you know, this is a little tough for him because he's having to, uh, you know, they basically um, put a rod in from his knee down to his ankle, and um, things aren't working like they're supposed to. And, uh, you know, he was, he, for Kyle, he was just a little bit down uh, yesterday when I spoke with him. And so he certainly needs our prayers for, um, uh, for continued healing, but also for uh, patience and comfort, you know, during this time uh, to allow himself to heal uh, so that he can. And I know, uh, you know, I was out a couple of weeks ago, and, um, uh, you know, somebody here uh, lifted me up, actually, Wilbur, uh, uh, you know, asked for prayer. I, I hurt my back. And, um, and it, it's, it, it, Kyle has said this to me yesterday. He said, it means so much when he knows at home that, you know, the church and so many folks are praying for him. And, and so, um, you know, not only do we believe in the power of prayer, but we know that, um, you know, it means something to those that are, uh, that are feeling that from you, right? Of course, for me, Wilbur lifted me up in prayer and said, Doug hurt his back, and uh, within the uh, same breath, Brandon said, yeah, he's getting old. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Um, yeah. He's right. It, it, it was a laundry accident. So, yeah, I hurt my back doing laundry, right? Yeah. Wilbur said, Wilbur actually said to me after that, he said, all right, ladies, that, that's one more reason why men should never do laundry. <laughs> Annie, my wife, she said, yeah, but if you did it more often, the pile wouldn't have been so big and you wouldn't hurt your back. <laughs> all right, point taken. All right, I got it. I got it. I know, I'll leave that part out in the future. I know. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer, please. Oh, sorry. Oh, Chris. Sorry. Last week I asked for the church to pray for Grace Ripley. Oh, yes. She actually passed away Friday. Oh. So, but she loves Jesus. She loves Jesus. She loves Jesus. And the family is confident that she's with her Savior. So, praise God for that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Steve and their family. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. All right, let's, let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you uh, for the privilege of prayer. We thank you for allowing us to come to you, Lord, uh, with our concerns, uh, big and small. Um, you know, you, you know all, Lord, and you understand uh, where we're coming from. You know our hearts. And uh, our hearts are sometimes concerned with big things and sometimes concerned with small things. And uh, whatever they happen to be to us, Lord, uh, if they're important to us, we know that they're important to you. And we, we are so grateful for your mercy and your understanding and your love, uh, Lord. We ask you, please, to bless all those that uh, have been lifted up here today, uh, all those that are on our prayer list. Uh, please offer them healing, Lord, according to your will. Uh, whether it's in body or mind or spirit, um, all, all those areas of our lives, Lord, need your help and your healing. Uh, we all know, as the pastor mentioned, that we are unworthy and undeserving of the love and the sacrifices and uh, all that you've done for us, Lord. Uh, we know that we don't deserve any of it. And, uh, and we are so grateful and so thankful for your constant, uh, continuous blessings and your unfailing love, Lord. Uh, thank you so much for loving us. We ask your blessings upon the rest of this service, Lord. We ask you to be with uh, our guest speaker. Uh, please fill him up, Lord, as you have filled this place with your spirit. Uh, please fill us uh, with your spirit, Lord, and take that Holy Spirit and, uh, and bring this, uh, bring this uh, through us and, uh, and to us, Lord. And please help us to make ourselves receptive to that. Help us to open our hearts and our minds uh, to that spirit uh, that is there and wants to penetrate us and uh, soften us and uh, make us uh, receptive and, and listening. Basically, Lord, 
Help us to listen with an open heart. We thank you again for all your blessings. We ask you, Lord, please to forgive us for our many sins and shortcomings. It's in Jesus' name we ask all these things. Amen. Amen. Oh, and so uh, we're going to have um, our uh, offertory hymn now. Where we're going to lead us. Uh, we'll do some tithes and offerings, uh, special music, and then the children will be uh, released for Children's Church. Please stand as we sing hymn number 626, I Love to Tell the Story.
Thank you. You may be seated. Um, and we get blessed uh, a double helping today. So uh, not only do we get the beautiful music from the choir, but uh, kind of another uh, special music performance right now, as I mentioned earlier with uh, Lauren Merriman. Um, I also failed to mention that uh, we are collecting, uh, we'll be taking up a love offering um, for the Merrimans um, uh, before they leave. And basically Wayne is going to be standing at the back uh, outside, they also have a table with some of their um, materials that uh, you guys are able to uh, purchase on your way out the door. Um, but uh, we'll be accepting those um, love offerings uh, again as we as we process out. But if you happen to be writing a check, um, Chris mentioned this last week, but uh, the check needs to be made out not to the church but to Merriman Family Ministries. Did I get that right, Ricky? Yeah. Okay. So this is going to be Lauren with uh, Kaya helping. gone and 
all the worries of this world just fade away what will it be like when you call my name and that moment when i see you face to face i'm waiting my whole life to hear you say well done well done my good and faithful one welcome to the place where you belong well done well done my beloved child you have run the race and now you're home Welcome to the place where you belong. Well done. What will it be like when tears are washed away? And every broken thing will finally be made whole. What will it be like when I come into your glory, standing in the presence of a love so beautiful? I'm waiting my whole life for that day. So I will live my life to hear you say, Well done, well done, my good and faithful one. Welcome to the place where you belong. Well done, well done, my beloved child. You have run the race, and now you're home. Welcome to the place where you belong. What will it be like when I hear that sound? All of heaven's angels crying out. Singing holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Singing holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. I'm waiting my whole life for that day so until then i'll live to hear you say well done well done my good and faithful one welcome to the place where you belong well done well done my beloved child, you have run the race, and now you're home. Welcome to the place where you belong. Well done. a lot of that feeling going around, Pastor, I tell you. Um, so, uh, Brother Merriman's going to come and, and uh, give us our message, as I mentioned here. Uh, just for, for those of you that may not know, um, 
Uh, he has a ministry, and you'll, you'll share more about that, but basically going into the prisons. Uh, he also has a pamphlet ministry um, uh, where he actually prints pamphlets of his own and in many languages that he gets out there. Uh, it's a wonderful ministry, and we are very, very grateful to have him with us here today. So thank you, Brother Merriman. Thanks, thanks so much. And really? those of us that are a little vertically challenged, it's a little bit Some people always ask me, say, uh, do you have to duck coming in that door? I say, well, I don't have to. You know? <laughs> I, I choose to. It's always best. To, I know this brother here has the same problem, but, um, but we all have uh, advantages and disadvantages. So uh, my advantage is being tall, but uh, sometimes it's a disadvantage. You get an island here. But, but, the, but the Lord is good, and you know, I just... Uh, I uh, was thinking about your, uh, your young people. You mentioned about the uh, graduating. And we need to make much about young people. I tell you, it's, it's, you know, it's, we need to make much about them. When they serve the Lord, you need to make much about them. Because uh, not all of them will finish well. You know, that, that, that is a song, you know, we all like to hear those words, you know, well done, that good and faithful servant. But I, I, I tell you, it's, it's a very humbling song to me. I'm thinking, Lord, will I hear that? God, I want to hear that, but will I hear that? And I, know it's, I think we're going to hear a lot of other, other things as well. We, we, will, we won't be judged for sin. I mean, uh, for our sin debt to God, Jesus, uh, God sent his only son to pay our sin debt. But we're going to be uh, judged for the actions we did in this body, uh, whether good or bad. But, um, uh, but that ought to be our goal is to, um, to have those words spoken to us. But... Uh, I know I fall, fall short of that sometimes, and, and we need God's help. But we do want to thank y'all, and um, I think that that'll get me ready to preach on. But I'm get me, I'm get him myself. But um, we, we do want to thank you for uh, supporting our ministry. Uh, we can't do it without uh, without our churches like this that, that gets behind us, and we appreciate that. And a lot of our our, our tracks we have about two million in the Philippines, and. And what I like about that is, you know, we do a lot of prison preaching, and we go a lot of jails, and uh, we get to see the end result when you when people don't make much about the kids, when people don't make much about the children. I see that you, one young man come up here help take an altar. You got to you better make much about that, because because the devil's got a lot of shining lights out there that will lure those kids into it, and we see the end result at the jails and the prisons. And we we got to make much about the kids, and so anytime we can, uh, I'm excited about that children's track goes into the public schools, and, and I'm, I'm telling you this: Can you imagine America uh, if we had the, the gospel being preached into the public schools? I'm allowed to go to the prison, but I can't go into the schools. Now, what's wrong with that? I mean, that 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 is allowing people to get sick uh, without the antidote. Uh, Jesus is the antidote. And, but we do want to thank you for allowing us to, to represent you in the field. We do a lot of local work. We, do a lot, we go into a lot of the, the local uh, prisons of Fluvanna, and uh, we go up in, uh, in Goochland, and uh, we go up to Page County. Uh, but the Lord is the answer. And uh, we just got to go into the one jail in Fluvanna. After recently, somebody got, in, got some uh, drugs into the facility, and one lady passed away because of it so security was real tight to say the least and but the lord allowed us to get into that prison and uh, uh and we, we we came into this room we, we couldn't go into one building uh but this uh, the other building was allowed to come in that would normally not be allowed to come and one lady asked the lord to save her that, that those three and i'm excited about that yeah. And then, then we went back in just past Thursday, um, had a service in there, and I'm thinking it's going to be really tight. It ain't going to be like it used to be. But, you know, uh, we got the same God. He's, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the chaplain just made a few phone calls, and next thing you know, we was back in there preaching to a, a bigger a group of ladies than we ever had prior to COVID. You know, we would we'd go in there, have 200 to 600 um, women in service prior to COVID. And then after that, it was, it was just down to just number, you know, one or two or three. But I, I'll be honest with you, uh, I can handle, I, I'm okay with one. Yeah. You, know, and, and, you know, Jesus through the Bible 
Uh, we like to preach about those great miracles, but he, for the most part, it was the lady at the well. You know, it was, it was a beggar at, the, uh, at the, the lame man at the gate called Beautiful. You know, God sent his disciples by there. But it's all with the power of Jesus. And um, so, uh, but uh, last Thursday, we went in there. And she made a few phone calls. We had, I think, 60 or 70 in service. We had five ladies that heard the gospel and got saved. And so we're excited about that. And so, uh, you know, that is on your account. Uh, that's through your support. And churches like you and, and other churches that support us. And uh, that's just the outreach of the local church. And, but we want to thank you all for everything that you've done and, and helping us along the way. But go by the table. We do have a few tracks that are new since the last time we are in here. We have the, uh, uh, the deaf track uh, that is to reach. Uh, that's why I like a gospel track. It'll reach each individual group wherever they're at. But it's the same message. You know, it's, it's the same message for whoever you're dealing with. And there's no wrong time to give the gospel. And uh, we want to thank you all for your support. Uh, one other thing I want to mention before we get into the message, uh, uh, once a year we host a youth camp at Rapidan Baptist Camp. It's real local. And uh, <clears throat> we had, last year we had about 96 in the camp. And, and uh, actually I've seen one of our young men in here that was at the camp. Uh, but it's a, we, we put that camp on once a year. And it's, it's the 4th of July, the 3rd through the 7th this year. And... Uh, uh, we bring in some uh, good, uh, uh, it's the 4th of July, so it's very patriotic. And we bring in uh, Baptist preachers, uh, ex-military men that preach the gospel now. And they'll get up beneath that flagpole and, and tell them why, we, uh, why, the, why they shed their blood. And, uh, and it's all about the Lord. And so it teaches them some patriotism. And plus, you know, to have fun. You know, camp, you got to have fun. Uh, but I encourage you to get your kids involved in the things of God. You know, God's people are, are the best people for them to be around. You know, if, if you don't put them around God's people, they're going to be around uh, the, the world and, and the devil's people, and he's going to influence them. So uh, if you want to know more about that, come by the table. We'll talk to you a little bit about that. Uh, I think it's 250 per kid for the whole week. You, you can't beat that. I mean, you just cannot beat that. that that's, that's room, that's, that's board, that's food. And you know how we are, our Baptists are. We like to eat, you know. So, and we got the gospel right, and we got the food right. So, so we know how to get it both done. But, but come by the table. But uh, the Lord's been good to us through that. We see the need uh, because we see where the end result is in prison, and uh, and worse than that, in hell. And uh, if you can reach that child at a young age, you'll keep him out of both. And uh, so. Uh, be praying for that, and uh, once, a, once a year we do that, and I tell you, the Lord's really blessed that camp. I see young people get on fire for the Lord, and, you know, and, uh, uh, the Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. And statistically, you look at what this world is thinking is going to make their kids happy. The odds of them to be in a professional football player is almost zero. I mean, and, and, you know, why are you going to go after something you cannot achieve? You cannot get there. And even as they did become a, a superstar in a, in, a, in a football team or a baseball team, they're just the most arrogant people you're ever going to meet and miserable. I mean, they, they don't know. They don't have the joy of the Lord. Make much about your kids serving the Lord. And, and it's going to be worth it one day. I, 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 she ain't going to like this when I say this, but... Um, um, uh, we had Lauren just graduated, and um, we had that uh, graduation party. So we was over fixing up in, in the uh, fellowship hall for the graduation, and so our church was getting ready to go out and visit people. Like your uh, pastor just uh, uh, exhorted you to, to go out and invite people to that revival meeting. We was sitting up, you know, for her big day, but she didn't want to go stay there. She wanted to go out and tell something about the Lord. I tell you, you know, that, 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 that's what it's about. And, and you've got to make much about your children serving, out, serving the Lord. How many people I could tell you that have been saved because a child gave them a gospel tract? And I tell you, there, there's some hard hearts out there, but when you take a little child give them a tract or invite them to church, it's hard for them to say no to that. My best friend got saved off a gospel tract. 
I would give him one. I might tell you this before. I'd give it to him, and he would give it back to me. He said, Ricky, I, I know you have it. He said, but I don't need that. And he would put it back in the same pocket that he knew before the Lord saved me that it used to be Marlboro cigarettes was in that pocket. And how convicting is that? And when, 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 when they see a change in you, and, 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 and but my daughter uh, was with us at the time. It was, her middle, it was a miller daughter now. But she gave him a track one day while I was in there fixing coffee, for like we always do. And we would drink coffee. He was a little older than me, and he just, he, wouldn't, he just wouldn't listen to me very well. He'd get mad at me when I preached to him. But my daughter gave him a gospel track while I was in there fixing coffee. He went home, read that track. The Lord smote his heart, drew him. And he got saved, came back asking me. He said, do you believe a person can get saved off of those papers that you had? He didn't know, he didn't know the terminology that it was a gospel track. And I, had, I said, yeah, it's a gospel on that. He said, well, I asked the Lord to save me. I said, I said, you what? I couldn't even believe it. I mean, that is a power of salvation. It had, had to get the job done if we do our job. I had to give it out. Give it out. You want people here, like your pastor said, go fight people. They'll come. And, uh, but do thank you all for uh, supporting us. And, and uh, we've been looking forward to this day and, and just, just excited about what the Lord's going to have uh, for us. And, um, and uh, I'm using the last one to turn to the, <clears throat> to the passage I'm getting ready to preach on. But the Judges uh, chapter 6. And, um, but the Lord's been good to us. And I uh, and, uh, just want to brag on Him. Uh, we're currently at about uh, 38, almost 30, almost 40 percent of our support. But all those tracks you see out there on that table, it goes to the uh, national pastors and missionaries, free through them, through the support of the local church, and then, and we want to be a blessing to them. And um, uh, I'll tell you this before we get into the word: uh, uh, the the one uh, we got a, a deer hunting track out there, and. I gave that out. We was in, actually in the same prison I mentioned in Flu Vanna. He was in there. And the Lord says, I want you to hand all these ladies in here a deer hunting track. And I thought, man, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. You know? I'm questioning whether that's just me, a dumb idea I had, or was it really this small, steel voice? So I argued with that for a little while, and then I, I finally come to the conclusion, that's not me. <laughs> I don't want to do that. It says, God be you, Lord. So we did that night, and I told my wife, I said, we're going to give all these ladies a deer hunt track. And she looked at me like, are you crazy, you know? She didn't say it, but she looked at me like that. And so, um, well, she might have said it, I don't know. But I didn't hear what she said, okay? But, so we handed those tracks, and uh, thought nothing about it. I'm still, after we did it, I'm thinking, I'm glad that was over, because I thought, I thought that was pretty dumb. But the, but, but the Lord was in it. I didn't know it. You know, I was, I was trying to discern that. And so uh, I heard old one old preacher say that the Holy Spirit of God is so sensitive, you got to listen to him. And if you push him away, he'll, he'll go away. And, and uh, we was in a church setting like this up in Piney Mill, Virginia, that morning. And we had a table set out. And uh, uh, we was just presenting that morning to the church. And we present the ministry we at the, back to the end uh, the table at the end of the service, and an older gentleman came up to me. He said, I got something that belongs to you. And he takes out his wallet, you know. I mean, what are you going to think? He takes out his wallet. I am think he's, he's got some money he's going to give me or something, you know. <laughs> so, but he pulled out that deer hunting track out of his wallet. I said, I, that, looks, that looks like one of my tracks. He said, my daughter was in a prison over in Fluvanna and sent it home to us. And the whole family got saved and up in church because... As a small, still voice that I was wrestling with. And you know what? When you tell that story, if you didn't tell anybody that I was wrestling with that, you think, man, that's, man, that, that's very spiritual of you. But I'm going to tell you, you can miss it just like that. You can miss it. And, and sometimes, you know, his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. And he's very sensitive. And when he speaks to you, you better, you better move and because it's hell at stake. People are dying and going to hell. And you and I, uh, we're there that represent the, re represent the Lord. I tell you, you, know, you I just, I just thought, thought about that song again. You know, I want to finish well. But if we do not listen to the Holy Spirit of God, you won't finish well. 
And um, but God has been good to us. So, but if you got your Bible, it's going to be in Judges uh, chapter six. I know we pray, but let's pray again. Can't pray too much. Lord, thank you for being so good to us. God, we pray, Lord, that you just uh, fill me up with your power, Lord. I can't do anything, God, without you. God, we pray that you hide us behind the cross. God, thank you uh, for the pastor having us in, the church. God, thank you for their support. God, over the uh, past year, we just want to praise you for that. God, we pray the Lord to this morning that if it's one here today, Lord, that don't know you as Lord and Savior, God, that today would be the day that they would repent, turn to a righteous and a holy God, and ask God to save them. God, help me to say exactly what you had me to say. Nothing more, nothing less. God, we want to uh, honor you this morning. God, we pray that you just bless your word. God, have free course. God, we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to go straight on into the, uh, I'm going to read, let's go to Judges 6, verse 1. The Bible says, and, and the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them and to the hand of Midian seven years, and the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel, and because of the Midianites, the children of Israel made them dens which were in the mountains and caves and strongholds. And so it was when Israel had sown that the Midianites came up and the Amalekites and the children of the east, even they, came up against them. And they had camped against them and destroyed the increase of the earth till thou came unto Gaza and left no substance for Israel, neither sheep nor ox nor ass. Verse 5 says, For they came up with their cattle and their tents, and they came as grasshoppers for multitude, for both they and their camels were without number, and they entered into the land to destroy it. And Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, it came to pass when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord because of the Midianites, that the Lord sent a prophet unto the children of Israel, which said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I brought you up from Egypt and brought you forth out of the house of bondage. And I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of all that oppressed you and drave them out from before you and gave you their land. And I said unto you, I am the Lord your God, fear not the gods of the Amorites, that's the little gods, the little G-O-D-S of the Amorites, and whose land you dwell, but you have not obeyed my voice. You know, you, we always, as, as Christians and Baptists especially, which I'm one of you, uh, we, we like to blame everybody else for our problems in America. But in reality, it is, is our fault. Uh, we're, the, we're the light of this world. And I'm afraid that, uh, as I've already alluded to, uh, we get too bogged down in this world and, and we, we become ineffective. And we, you know, our children, you know, we put more emphasis on little Johnny going down and playing ball and little Sue doing this and that, and we don't put emphasis on God first. And I tell you, it's so elementary as that. Here are the children of Israel. And you know, God says back in that verse, he says, and, and, and I said unto you, I am the Lord your God. Fear not the gods of the Amorites. God ain't, he's not saying, and he says, you didn't listen to my voice. And that, that fear, he's, he's talking about a reverence. You know, we don't have enough reverence for God as, as, as Christians. And, uh, and you know what? I, I, Hey, thank God that we saw enough uh, importance to come to church Sunday morning. You know, but, but the fact of the matter is, every time the church house is open, we ought to see put more emphasis on, on coming to church. Hey, when we got revival set, we ought to, we ought to take our vacation and, and make sure it ain't during revival time and put much about Jesus. Yeah. And I tell you, when your kids know that and you love the Lord more than you love this world. And the Bible talks about the world. It says, love not the world, neither the things in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. I tell you, the kids will see right through our hypocrisy. You know, if we say, you know what? Hey, preacher, I love you. Hey, I love the church. And those are good things to say. 
But if you say that in church and, and your children and your family see you outside in the world living totally opposite, I'll tell you, hey, that's hypocrisy. Hey, hey, hey God, hey, God, he, Jesus always rebuked the Pharisees and the way they lived. The Pharisee would come to church, hey, they would look good, and then they even got on the side of the corner and prayed so everybody else could see them. But inwardly, Jesus knew who they were. Hey, they was raving wolves. Hey, hey, there was, hey, there was nothing more than uh, a, 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 a wolf in sheep clothing. You know, the Bible says that here, and you know, often we see we saw, hey, see see God move body in the prison because of this, because a lot of things that that we take for granted or take away from them. They don't have, they can't come and go like we can. But you know, on the other side of that, you and I, God gives you a free will, gives you a free will, and He doesn't force Himself on you. But I tell you, you cannot be Spirit-filled and Spirit-led if you don't have enough Jesus in you to come into the church. Like the, like the one old preacher would say, he says, as big as God is, he talks about the world being the footstool of God, as big as he is, if his feet and the world's got it, it's just barely big enough to hold his feet, and he's and, he, and he's inside your heart. Why is he not poking out of you somewhere? Uh, something's wrong if he's not poking out of you. People ought to see what you got, and and it's real, and they ought to want what you have. You know, this world is completely miserable, and and they don't know they'll have no joy. I think it's impossible for them to have joys. And I like what the old preacher would say. He says, uh, what they rely on is happiness. You know, the, you know, you pull up out here in the, in the parking lot with a brand new car, and I'll tell you, but, but every one of us would be happy if we had a brand new car. But what's going to happen when someone scratches with a key or someone runs into it, like the one brother you mentioned, the missionary? Hey, it's, uh, that's what takes you to keep you happy. You, you need something else. You know, and then you're going to need something else when something fails in that. Hey, the joy of the Lord, the Bible says, is your strength. Amen. Hey, this world, when they see that you're happy no matter what's taking place in your life, hey, when they see that, they're going to want, and they, they know you're happy, they're going to say, you know what? I see the joy in, in their life. Even in turmoil. Even when someone is sick and on their deathbed. You know, uh, I often mention my, my mother-in-law uh, she's in heaven now, uh, but she knew she was going. Now, how many people get to get to that? You know, sometimes you know you're. You know, uh, I just got a text yesterday from uh, one of our supporters, is from his wife, uh, and um, brother Robert Carroll. He, uh, his wife says, this, this uh, brother Carroll went on home to be with the Lord. You know, and uh, had a massive heart attack, just like that. He didn't get the time to bring in the family. But my mother-in-law got time to bring in her family. They were just making her, just making her comfortable. And she's getting ready to check out of this world. And, and she wasn't kicking, and she wasn't thrashing, and she wasn't mad at God. I tell you, God is good to us. I tell you, no matter what's happening in your life, you can't blame it on God. Hey, all the curses of this world, it, it, ain't, it ain't from God. God, hey, God will not tempt no man, the Bible says. And she was telling everybody how much she loved her. And I loved her. Hey, I love you. She, someone walked in the room and she kind of gathered herself back and she showed up her eyes and smiled and said, I love you. She called the name out. You know, you know what that did? That convicted the heart of the lost family members. And so how did she go through this? And, and, and I got to preach at the funeral. And I preached this message on, uh, did you have the grace that Granny had? You know, people won't get it. Number one, you got to have that saving grace. And, and you, we'll never get the dying grace until we need it. But, but when, when, when you need it, God will give it to you. I'll tell you, uh, this kicking and thrashing and going to heaven, that, that ain't what my Bible says. That, that, that's not dying grace. Yeah. Something is wrong. You know, salvation is a time and a place where the sweet Holy Spirit of God comes by your way. I'm going to get to my text here now. In verse 24, the Bible says, And Gideon built an altar there unto the Lord and called it Jehovah Shalom unto, unto this day as yet in Ophrah and of the Abazarites. 
And um, it, those tough words like that, you just read them real quick. People don't even know you're Miss Mercy. But uh, that's what I do. But, uh, but, but my message, my thought this morning is, is burning bridges. Now, here is Elijah. I mean, not Elijah, but Gideon. Here's Gideon. He, he first realized that they was in trouble. I tell you, salvation is a time and a place when a person realizes you're in trouble. You're in trouble. You know, uh, I remember the night I got saved. I got born into the family of God. Uh, that night, I, I, I remember when I got lost. You know, salvation is not coming to a, a tr uh, accident and seeing some lights. I hear all kinds of stuff that's not biblical. Now, I know people tell you that they're sincere, and God is merciful and long-suffering. And I know He will save people's lives to bring them to a point where they, they'll get under Holy Ghost conviction. But that night I got under Holy Ghost conviction. I remember I came to church because uh, uh, my brothers and sisters, they saw the need of my soul. And they got a burden. They, went, they invited me to church. And I came. And I was in the earshot of the gospel that night. I heard the death and the burial and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior. That night on the Holy Ghost conviction, I admitted I was lost, and I repented of my sins, and I turned to a righteous and a holy God to save my soul. Amen. I tell you, here in this, uh, in this chapter, children of Israel, they saw that they was in trouble because of the enemy. And, and God, and the reason they was in trouble is because they turned their backs on God. And that's, that is the case over and over in the Bible. And that's the case in, in our time, too. Every time. Now, I'm not saying that trials and affliction will, will come in and that you, you, you'll commit some sin. But sometimes it is. And sometimes it's not. But you know, here they are. They, fought, they, they saw the need and they cried out to God. And God sent them. Oh, hey, he didn't just wipe out the enemy. He sent a prophet and told them what, what they needed to do. And, 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 you know, when you see the need of salvation, a, a God will put somebody in your path to preach the gospel, the death and the burial and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior. Yeah. And, but, you know, John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him <coughs> shall not perish but have everlasting life. Hey, Hey, God, hey, but it's there, that's a condition. You know, God died for this whole world, but not all this world is going to go to heaven. Hey, this, for the most part, the Bible says broad is the road that leads to destruction. And that tells me there's going to be a lot of people that would die and go to a devil's hell that they don't belong. Hey, we, we don't belong. Hey, mankind doesn't belong in hell. But that's where we're going. Hey, for the wages of sin is death. Hey, but the gift of God is eternal life of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hey, when you see that need of your soul spending eternity in hell, that night I heard the gospel. And that preacher was preaching in Revelation, and, he, and, he, and, and it was like the Holy Spirit of God, which it was, was bearing witness with my spirit that I was lost. You know, the Bible says you've got you to work that out with fear and trembling. You know, I, I thought about, uh, I thought about that. Here is Gideon. Uh, his dad was a uh, worshiper, uh, adulterer worshiper of, of idols, and that the whole town was this way. But Gideon, uh, God spoke to him and called him. And you know, and, uh, there, and, and remember the story how he goes out and he he, he tears down Baal and. And um, he takes the he tears down the grove, and, he, and he, but he tears down the altar. He tears down the altar. You know, uh, John the Baptist came and he preached. And he says, "Repent, repent, repent." Yeah. You know that, that and at that time the Jews was was trusting the Mosaic law. You know, but that was always uh, the the school uh, to bring it. The Bible says the law was your schoolmaster to bring you to Christ. Well, John the Baptist is known as a forerunner because when he came, he says, you've got to repent of that. Now, you've got to repent of that and turn to God. You know, repentance is simply turning whatever you think. And I, you go up to any person in this world and say, why do you, you think you can go to heaven? 
They're going to give you an answer. It's not going to be biblical, but they're going to give you some kind of answer. You know, I'm, good, I'm a good neighbor. You know, and they'll give you some good things. But good ain't good enough. And John the Baptist says, you got to repent of whatever. And you trust him to get you to heaven if outside of Jesus Christ. you got to repent and turn to him. Well, Gideon, here is Gideon. He knew that that altar was bad and, 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 and God, God raised up a deliverer. And even Gideon, Gideon didn't think he was qualified to do it. And God raised him up. But he answered that call. And this is what I want to get to on, 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 on connect this to our kids. Uh, when he did all this, the Bible says he did that by night. And, and the people in the city got mad. And, and they, they were going to kill whoever did that. And he, and he came to his father's house. And he said, we heard Gideon did this. We're going to kill him. And his father saw his son did something right. And you know, he stood up for him. He stood up for him. I tell you, that's what's wrong with America. We've got to stand up for our kids and do it right. Hey, and, and put down sin. Don't don't lift up sin. Hey, hey I, I tell you, I believe that anybody can get saved. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But I but I ain't worshiping no month. And let anybody tell me that that I'm a, I'm gonna worship any kind of pride. You know, pride goes before fall. I'm not worshiping that, and I'm not gonna give into that. And what they need is the gospel. And God, God can save their soul. And and, and, and we don't need to be a part of that mess. And the Bible says, and then the many, men of the city, verse 30, sent to Joash, bring out thy son, that, that he may die, because he hath cast down the altar of Baal, and because he cut down the grove that was by it. And, and Joshua said unto all that stood against him, will you plead for Baal? Will you save him? He that will plead for him, let him be put to death. Hey, whistles, whistles yet morning, and see that be a God, let him plead for himself, because one hath cast down his altar. Therefore on that day called him Zerubbabel, saying, Let Baal plead against him, because he hath thrown down his altar. Then the Mennonites and the Amalekites and the children of the east were gathered together and went over and pitched in the valley. Hey, but, look at verse 34. But the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon. You know what happened? Once, uh, once Gideon, he took care of that altar. When he broke down that altar, there was worshiping false gods. And then he built a new altar, and he offered up a sacrifice, and he took the grove that he, took, that he tore down, and he, and he burnt that up as a fire for that, to worship God. And you and I as Christians, we need to tear down. And when you become a Christian, it's exactly what you do. And whatever you're putting your faith and trust in outside of Jesus, and if it's works, is it church membership, Hey, whatever it is, you need to put that, tear that altar down, and you need to give it to God. Hey, there's only one way to get to God, and that's through faith, by faith. Hey, not a works, they say any man should boast. The, and when Jesus died on that cross, he shed his righteous and his holy blood. And those famous words he said, he said, it's finished. That salvation paid for, fully free for you and I. And the Bible says you've got to work that salvation out with fear and trembling. Hey, for it's a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living God. Hey, this is how you work. And Jesus said the best. He said, this is the work of God, and that you believe on Him whom you have sent. You and I, we enter into the finished works at Calvary by faith. The Bible says, without faith it's impossible to please Him. For one must come and believe that He is, and that He's rewarded them that diligently seek a hey, faith is a substance of things hoped for. A hey, the evidence of things not seen. A hey, by it they also obtain a good report. Hey, I tell you, hey, salvation is a time and a place where you see yourself as a sinner. That you will see yourself as dying and going to hell. Hey, God can't save you if you ain't going to need saving. But I'm glad that night I got lost. Hey, I admitted to myself that, that I was hell bound. And with the hammer down, and there was no hope for me. That preacher was preaching in Revelation 10, and he said this. He said, and the, and the devil that deceived him was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And I saw a great white throne, and that's, and that's where he said, you work it out with fear and trembling. Because you don't get saved here, you're going to be at that great white throne judgment. Being judged. 
And if you hit the great white throne judgment, that means you're already in hell. And you're being brought up out of hell to be judged for the final time. And at that time, they're going to see salvation. Hey, but you won't be able to partake of it. And when you see God, one by one, God is going to say, guilty, cast him in the lake of fire. Guilty, cast him in the lake of fire. You and I that are saved and born into the family of God, we will be that great cloud of witness. And we're going to be seeing that. And, and that's the reason you're going to be crying. And that's the reason God's going to wipe away the tears from our eyes. Because there's going to be people that we love, that we've done a good job, and we try our best, and we pray for them to get saved, but they never got saved. And we're still going to weep for them. But I also believe there's going to be people there that we didn't do a good job, that we rub elbows with. Hey, we didn't go after them with the gospel. We didn't tell them we were Christians. And they're going to bring accusations up to you and me and say, hey, Rick, I didn't know you was a Christian. Why did you give me a track? Hey, you and I, we, we're the ones. Hey, just like God, Moses did many times, he came in between the children of Israel and God's wrath. And he reasoned with God many times. Hey, to, when you and I were humble, hey, when we get on our knees and pray for people, hey, this altar should be a common place for you. Should, should be a place that you come often. Hey, begging God for mercy and for His grace to intervene in our families. I tell you, hey, that is what's wrong with America. Hey, when the invitation is given on most churches, and people are just too comfortable sitting where they're at, they don't see the need. But I'm going to tell you, one day it's going to be, it's going to be too late. Hey, for your family. Hey, you're going to be crying and, and, and there's going to be no remedy. Hey, right now we can cry if they got breath in their lungs and there's hope for them. There is hope for tomorrow for the, for the Christian if we keep praying and trusting God. I'm glad that night I got, when I got saved is because my brother and sister had a burden for me. They knew I was going to die and go to hell without Christ. Yep. I tell you, you get to that point that your family member is lost. I tell you why they they got see no need for God. Because God ain't in the hearts. And hey, they're not they never come down that altar. And they never had a time and a place where you said, you know what? This is taking me to hell. I need to tear this down and I need to build another altar and offer it up to God. And I'll tell you the only offer, offering that God will accept is the blood of Jesus. So, hey, Jesus died on that cross, he said it's finished. There's no other sacrifice needed. You and I, we enter into those works by faith. There has to be a time. And there has to be a place where you repent of your sin. And ask Jesus to save you. Hey, this altar is a place where you come and you say, God, I can't, but you can. Hey, when you stand in your seat, you say, God, I got my hand on this. I don't need you. Hey, I, I tell you, sometimes if I don't get a burden to come to the altar, I wonder why I ain't got to go down to that altar. And I'll go there and ask God, what's wrong with me, Lord? I, I, I ain't got no burden for people. And I'm going to tell you, why we know it's pride. Hey, pride. Pride. I tell you, that's what's wrong with this the month that people are trying to celebrate. It is pride. And I'm going to tell you, that pride will take you to hell. You know, or send somebody else there. Hey, 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 if you're saying, hey, you don't have a burden for something. Right, you ought to give them, you ought to beg God. And I'll tell you, that right there, victory on this altar is, is won in the secret place. Hey, hey, hey if you, uh, that tells a lot about yourself. If you, if you have a problem coming down here, and it may be a problem because you don't go into your closet and shut the door and bring up people that you know that are sick in the church and people that are lost and people are praying for them. And take up to God. And we're too busy, too busy going to the prayer closet and saying, you know what? Like Santa Claus. Say, God, I want a new truck. I want a new shotgun. I want this. I want that. It, it, ain't, it ain't a wish list. Hey, it's, 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 it's giving up prayers on God. And I tell you, I found this out in my own prayer life. That if you start worrying about everybody else and put them before you, one day you're going to look back at some of your problems that you was too busy. You was too busy worrying about everybody else. And you look back to them. That's how it works. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Hey, if you need a new shotgun, God will give it to you. Hey, you need a new car. Hey, a lot of things say hey, we, we need food. We need, there's a lot of things that we need. Hey, but God, he takes care of that. The one thing needful is being at the feet of Jesus. 
Mary and Martha had that problem. And I'll tell you, you and I, we have that problem if we're not careful. And we just don't put enough faith and trust in God supplying all of our needs. And I'll tell you, uh, you know, the, the youth camp, I just got that on my brain because it's coming up real soon. I don't have no problem with none, none of the young people come to camp until they go home with mom and daddy. And, and they got convicted during the week, and, and they, they got some things right in their life, and they go home and convicts mom and daddy. You know? And uh, you know, I think of that verse over there, Pastor, in Ephesians, it, it says, uh, we, we, we like to quote that one, children obey your parents. We like that as parents. But it going down a little bit further, it says, it says provoke not your children to wrath. I tell you, you want to provoke a child to wrath? Don't make much about them. Hey, don't, don't say nothing, you know, you're good, doing a good job. Because you know what? And I find out when, they, when it provokes them and it makes them uncomfortable, it's because they ain't right with God. The parents ain't right with God. And I, t I had a lady call me up one time and says, what are you teaching over there? My kid come home and he burned up all of his uh, uh, CDs of rock and roll music and all kinds of stuff. And she's named the list. And I said, you know, uh, well, praise God. And I said, let me tell you what we preached on that week. I said, nothing to do with that. I said, wonder who told him, told him to do that. That's the Holy Spirit of God. He'll, he'll move in. He'll tell him to get rid of all that junk. And you know what happened? It went home and convicted Mama. You know, and I, and I, and I was doing my best just to give a biblical answer, not answer in the flesh. And, and I did. I gave her flesh. I gave her the right um, answer of the Bible. And she came back next year with more kids. I'm going to tell you, we need it. It's convicting sometimes. Hey, but we need it. We need to be convicted by the Holy Spirit of God. I tell you, maybe you're in here today, you've never been, been saved. And the Holy Spirit of God has convicted you that you're lost. You need to get born again. I like, when, I like when Nicodemus, when he came to Jesus by night, that was the most religious man that ever lived. And Nicodemus. And, and Jesus said, you must be born again. He thought that was something hard. I mean, he said, that's, that's, that's crazy. How in the world can I go into my mother's womb a second time? He said, you must be born of the Spirit. There has to be a time and a place. He said, you must be. Must be born again. Positionally put into the family of God. Have you ever been positionally put into the family of God? Well, you can't do it on your own. It's when you repent and call on God, and he positionally puts you into the family of God. Then that, that, that practical position, that's you and I uh, being the Christian that this world needs to see. I tell you, we all fail on that, that sometimes, and we need God. We need to keep our hearts humble and, 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 and ready to learn from the, from the Lord and the Lord. And I tell you, there's nothing better person to learn from is the sweet Holy Spirit of God. I guarantee you, he's put something on your heart. He's, he spoke to my heart and was putting this together. Hey, he'll, he'll put something on your heart. Well, no one else told you that. The Holy Spirit of God told you that. Hey, get that thing right. Hey, and maybe it's salvation. Hey, work it out with fear and tremor. Has there ever been a time and a place? And, and I'll, I'll give you this as a warning. The verse of the Bible says that no man can come to me except for the Father, which says, send them draw. That's the Holy Spirit of God. Right. And when the Holy Spirit of God convicts your heart and, and says you're lost, and that's exactly what happened to me that night. Nobody came back. No church member came back to me and said, hey, Ricky, you're lost. You need to go in there and get saved. But the Holy Spirit of God did. And that was the night I got saved. And I tell you, that's the only way anybody's going to get saved. No man can, can get saved until that Holy Spirit of God pricks that heart and draws them to salvation. Out. Have you ever been drawn? Is he drawing you now? Hey, we're going, we're going to give an invitation. This could be your chance to get that thing right. And I'll tell you this. Uh, the devil, uh, God is not the author of confusion. If you're saved, he's, he's not going to come by and say, hey, you need to get saved. Uh, he's not going to trick you. The devil ain't going to say you need to get saved. But, but the God, he will say, you know what? You're, you're not saved. You need to get born into the family of God. If that's you this morning, You've never been saved, never been born again. Hey, uh, won't you get that thing right? Father, hey, hey won't you be like Gideon's, Gideon's uh, dad? When this, when this world comes to attack him, hey, you, you, you stand behind your kid and encourage him in the Lord. And, uh, and, and one day, the, the, when they finish well, 
uh, uh, you get to you, you get to sit back, and it's no no better pleasure than sitting back and seeing your kids serve the Lord. And I tell you what, uh, you know, I was, Lauren was singing this morning. But that thrilled my soul. But I tell you what thrilled my soul more is her going out and visiting people. You know that that's what no one else saw. I, but I tell you that 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 is substance. And I tell you, you know what? Every one of these children in here can can have that if mom and dad get behind them. Now you saying you don't. I don't know you that well, but I tell you, I encourage you if you're doing it, keep on doing it. And uh, if, you're not, if you're not saved, I want you to come on there and get saved. Hey, maybe somebody's on your heart this morning. You say, you know what? I, I need to pray for that person. Well, the altar is open. Hey, won't you come on down here and do, take care of some business? Let me ask you, that person you claim that you love, and I love, do we pray for them enough? Hey, do we got a burden for them? Or do we think about them? Uh, I'll tell you what me and my wife and daughter do. Every night, we have family devotion. We'll come in before we even go to bed, and we'll lift up people that we know that's lost in our family. And uh, we'll pray to God we'll, we'll, we'll save them and pray to God we'll use our family. I'll tell you, you've got to make much about Jesus because the devil, he makes much about himself. He, he, he's got the shining lights. Hey, but we got one that's just far brighter than the devil's light. Amen. All right. Let's pray, and then let God have your way as a uh, month of pianist comes, Pastor. And uh, pens come and, and uh, hey, let God speak to your heart, okay? Lord, thank you for this time. God, we pray that you would bless this invitation. God, we pray for anybody who's lost, that don't know you as Lord and Savior, God, that today would be the day of salvation. God, we want to thank you. God, help us to, to, to be spirit-filled, spirit-led. Use us, God, for your honor and your glory. God, we pray that you just have your way. Uh, hey, maybe this morning that, so, Brother Ricky, the Holy Spirit of God has pricked my heart, and I know I'm lost. I've never been born again. I like to get that thing settled. Won't you just come on down to this altar? Won't you just call on God while he's near, while he's wooing your heart, while the sweet Holy Spirit of God is speaking to your heart? Hey, you better get in. Behold, today is the day of salvation, not tomorrow. Hey, that speaks of the importance of listening to God and that drawing, that wooing of the Holy Spirit of God. If you died right now, do you, do you have, hey, would you be in heaven? Would you take your next breath into heaven? Hey, you've got to answer that for yourself. That's what you have to work out. Has there ever been a time, has there ever been a place the sweet Holy Spirit of God came by your place? As the piano is playing, hey, what you do business with God this morning?